ago. Um, and the pub has always been, I mean, the pub's been here since the doomsday, so back in the 14, 1500s. Um, the pub's always been the centre of the, the village. But it, uh, over years, it's had a number of different landlords. And one of the challenges in the UK is that a lot of pubs are actually owned by uh, what are called pub groups. Um, now, pub groups uh, are, they will argue that they are pub operators. In the main, they're actually property companies, so they will buy pubs as assets uh, and they'll strengthen their balance sheet through those assets and they'll leverage that balance sheet. What, the, what it means is that the landlord of a pub is tied to uh, beer um, and uh, wine requirements, so they have to buy their beer and wine from that particular pub group, and those prices are very high. As they increase their food offer, their rent goes up as well. Uh, so the more successful they become, the higher higher prices they have to pay, and eventually it becomes unsustainable for a landlord. And quite frequently the pub will therefore close. That's what happened here. So this pub closed about four years ago now. Um, and, and that's exactly what happened. Um, so my involvement with the pub has been simply as a, as a social. Uh, we were right across the UK. If you're only drinking in a pub, you've probably not got a successful business, unless you are right in the middle of London. Um, and you've got a very high footfall that is drinking in there. Um, if you are outside of London or outside of any major conurbation, then you have to have food as part of your offer, um, simply because that's the way, that's where the main profit is, and that's the way you can attract people into the pub. So yeah, it's got a lovely garden, it's got a great restaurant, and it's building a very good re um, reputation. Um, and that does mean that from, uh, a, a sort of, it becomes a destination outlet for lots and lots of different people. So we get a lot of people in from outside the village. If you look around the garden now, I probably know half a dozen people maybe, um, but a lot of other people are from outside the village. And that's, that's how you make a success. We've been very fortunate here in that we managed to, in the process of buying the pub, we then spent quite a lot of time recruiting uh, or advertising and recruiting the right landlord. And Matt Ford came in to run the pub. Uh, and he's been very successful. He embraced the village vision that we articulated that's on our website um, and he's worked pretty well with that um, and, as, and that's part of the reason why the pub's been very successful. The most important factor is deciding what it is that the village wants and that you only get that by going to the village and asking people so what is it they want from their pub and the key elements of the feedback that we got from the village were they wanted it to be the centre of the community they wanted to have a good food offer, quality but not expensive, so good value food offer, and they wanted it to be a social place so that things were happening. So for example, we have the book club meets once a month here, we have the wine society, the village wine society meets once a month, we have various music evenings, um, we've got a, a various games that the kids can play in the garden, we've got a, it's a an Oxfordshire game that involves throwing sticks at a pole, basically, that's set up down the corner there. Um, so there's lots and lots of different things that will attract people into the village or into the pub uh, and make it a real social... social. Um, uh, um, so when the pub first closed, um, we a group of us got together um, and had a think about what could be done. Um, key thing is we didn't want to lose the pub. There's too many villages in the UK have lost their pubs. Um, so a few of us decided to get together and work out how we could actually go about buying the pub. Um, we were very fortunate in that process um, in that we got some help from a very wealthy chap in the village who actually um, loaned us the money to mortgage the pub. And then we um, set up a, a community benefit society in the village um, people were able to contribute to that, minimum £300, maximum £20,000, one member, one vote, and we managed to get another £175,000 uh, out of that, which enabled us to do a lot of the alterations. So the dining room that you see behind me, the barn area, <coughs> didn't exist in that format um, seven months ago. Yeah, we, when we were putting the management committee together, it was probably three or four of us uh, originally sat down to uh, look at buying the pub. And we were very careful in making sure that we got a range of skills. Um, so we have 
an ex-finance director on the, on the board, on the management committee board. We've got a couple of other businessmen. We've got a main a, a revenue director from one of the big hotel groups. Uh, obviously a QC, the legal representative. And then the other five people <coughs> are representatives of other constituents within the village. So we've got a mum on there with two young kids. Um, we've got a couple of guys who represent what we would call the old village. Um, so guys that have been in the village for all their lives basically and they're into their 60s now. Those two also happen to be very practical individuals um, so they understand the, the mechanics of planning permission, building regulations, how to go about appointing builders and so on and so forth. So the key bit is finding, uh, in, in the management committee was finding a spread of skills um, that enabled us to cover all of the bases that are required in taking a project like this forward. And that's worked very, very well. Um, and that's meant that we've been able to tackle most issues um, with some form of consensus and actually keep some real pace to things. One of the challenges in any project like this is keeping the thing going and keeping people um, enthused and incentivized to actually make it come to fruition. I've had experience of what one or two pubs have come to ask us how we did it and what our experiences were. And one of the challenges they've faced is that it's taken too long to go from we want to do this to actually doing it and as a result people have lost their enthusiasm. So the recommendation is always if you're going to do it, get on with it <clears throat> and sometimes it's better to use busy people. If you want a job done, done quickly and done well then get a busy person to do it. Um, it's an old English saying as it were but it does work. Um, okay.